Good evening. Sorry I didn't join you yesterday, but I got home so late from uh, being on with Ari that uh, <laughs> I just, uh, I didn't want to walk in the dark, so I didn't. I took off the evening. So I'm glad to be back with you, uh, and I think I want to talk about uh, Trump again, because uh, he's doing things, as we all know. Um, and I, not I noticed that I got a scratch on the side of my face. I went through some bushes, so apparently I scratched myself a little bit. Such delicate Irish skin, you know. <clears throat> so, to the point. Are mob-comfortable, formal chief executive of the beacon of freedom and democracy has uh, finally found the line to cross that gets everybody, rightly, upset with him. And what he basically said was, if you go after me, I'm going after you. Now, it does matter who says such a thing. You know, if a kid says it, then maybe it's funny and it's a joke. But, uh, good. So what we have here, I got neighbors going past us here. So what we have here is a guy who associated with the mob, worked with them at the casinos, had them resident in his golden tower, uh, made deals with them, was represented by Roy Cohn, who represented the mobsters, and did some pretty rough things in his career. And in recent years, has taken on these aspects, obstructing justice, which is a charge in uh, Florida, resisting production in connection with the January 6th committee hearings, and we could go on and on, and everybody probably knows about it. The intimidation of witnesses is also an important part of that. And the mob, in my experience as a prosecutor in drug cases, tried to fool around with uh, who was on the jury and to intimidate them and so forth. And I did a matter um, as an assistant district attorney in the Bronx, not federal, state, county. And uh, I saw a terrible instance of interference that was not prosecuted. So uh, Trump has an easy way about these things. So when he says, I'm going after you, that means something special. And those who know little would look at the fact that he managed to intimidate a lot of Republicans that might go otherwise and found comfort with the worst of the Republican leadership that has allowed his evil ship to sail as far as it has. So his statement, therefore, was something worth acting on. And I think objectively and fairly, that's what the prosecution did, Jack Smith's team. And the judge decided on Saturday that she wanted an answer from the defendant's team by 5 p.m. on Monday. Now, if you want something cheeky, <laughs> the defense team asked for three days to prepare their response. Now, I'm not going to be critical of the judge because she may be throwing several balls up in the air, but I would say get your ass into court and either give it to me in writing or give it to me oral, and I want it by Monday, 5 o'clock. Your call. Give me the papers or you appear in person, one or the other. But I want an answer about this. Now, what are these guys doing? These guys... Uh, are probably trying to control a client who did exactly what it appears that he did, which is he's trying to <clears throat> intimidate the jury pool, he's trying to intimidate individual witnesses, and the government is saying, before you give this guy our materials that necessarily will identify some, if not all, of the witnesses in this trial, we want a protective order. And some may say, what possible protective order could you issue that would possibly constrain this Homeric lawbreaker? This guy 
Laws are so much tissue paper to this guy. Nothing matters. So, what do you do if you're the judge? Well, I also don't think you can ignore the delusional advocacy of Trump's lawyers on TV in recent days, on several different levels. There's one lawyer, Lauro, that I spoke with Ari about last night. And uh, Ari's been talking about it on the beat for several days. And the bottom line on that guy is he's out there trying to defend, and it's sort of like he's spitballing without knowing. At one point, it sounded like he hadn't even read the indictment to know what it's about. And he's basically saying, well, you know, we were just, that was just alternate plan D. Well, really. And that's why I said it was planned dumb, because basically he was admitting elements of the crime, namely that <laughs> this proposal for alternate electors and or referring it to the states for, you know, 10 days to now investigate what had already been investigated and come up short of any fraud. That was the that was kind of the proposal. So if you're a judge and you look across the landscape of misconduct by Trump, you say, he has obstructed. I even had cases in my own court involving the January 6th committee. We see how he conducts himself outside the court, figuring that he can get away with that and then come in the court and not be punished for it. The uh, team that he's on says, oh, this is just First Amendment. Like any speech is allowed, and it's not intrinsic to the speech. It could be defamatory. It could be incite to riot. It could be, I'm going to threaten you. If you don't do something that I want, I'm going to break your legs, which is not an uncommon threat, and it is a threat. And what it constitutes is an assault in the sense that I am saying I'm going to do something, you, are, you perceive that I could do it or somebody would do it on your behalf. And so I am put in fear of my own safety. <clears throat> That's assault. Battery is an unconsented touching. If I just touch you and you didn't say, go ahead, that would be a battery. But the sensation from the conduct of the man and the content of what he says is that you have to consider pretty carefully any threat he makes. So, let's all be judge. <laughs> what will we do about it? Well, number one is I think the judge gives a dressing down to Trump. I think that's simple and obvious. Now, is it possible to come up with some explanation? He had too much Adderall? I doubt it. So I suspect that the first thing up is he gets a dressing down, and so do his attorneys for what they're saying, because they're kind of echoing, like mini-me's, the misconduct of their patron, who is paying them to do whatever he tells them to do, not to advise them about the law, but to serve his interests, not the law's interests. And I think that's evidence in their arguments out of court. Now, so what else besides dressing them down, you know? Well, we know this president just go out and brush it off. So we need something else. Well, I think we need uh, a fine. He should pay a fine. What should he pay? 10000 50000 50000 Now, what else would be a punishment so he gets a taste of what can happen in the here and now if he practices a misconduct in violation of the judge's direction. I put him in jail for two days. In jail. Not at home. Not in New Jersey. Not in Florida. In jail. And I, it doesn't have to be some sort of low-level, low-life high-risk situation, but he's in custody for two days. And, uh, 
you know, the Secret Service, they can have the cell adjoining, or they can have a guard. They, they can work it out. If this man is later put in prison, we can work that out. And I don't know if once you committed crimes and so forth like he has, if he's found guilty of one or more of these three charging documents so far, so far and a fourth one perhaps coming out of Georgia in the next week or so. But, you know, we can deal with that then. Maybe he's not entitled to it. And if he is, there are ways to do it. We'll probably spend less if he's in a non-mobile situation sitting in a prison somewhere. So, now I'm not a judge. And uh, I only wanted to be one when I was younger and had the idealized vision of the judges that I saw both in the trial court and the Court of Appeals in New York. And now, it's not so much how you would carry it off. It is the elements of the job that would be distressing. Codes telling you how to sentence, not individualized. People coming in in civil and criminal cases, arguing about what they should get or not get in terms of discovery. Brace yourself, we're about to see that in these various cases involving Trump. Even though there are pretty set rules in the criminal proceedings about how discovery is made, and again, it's mostly from the government, although there is, if you sign a certain agreement, obligations for the defense to agree to certain, in my opinion, compromises of their ability to say, we're not telling you anything. And uh, I have done the latter in a case in reliance on the rules with the support of the federal district judge. It was a Virginia case. So the... Uh, Entire proceeding has some significance because this is the test of the system. And with or without his counsel's knowledge or approval, Trump has decided on this. People aren't going to tell him what to do. He's going to tell them. He was president on the way to becoming king. And he wants to become king, not just president, in this election year next year. And so he's going to fight for that. And he has the same kind of delusional advocacy that he's infected everybody around him with or that they feel they must do to satisfy him to have access to his power, to not be hurt by his power, to share in the power, to share in the wealth, to share in the contacts, and the country and the nation and democracy and the republic be damned. So, that's kind of my analysis of uh, our latest flap with the man-child from Manhattan. So, uh, I welcome you to my cathedral of trees. Just watch out for the low branches, and I expect I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.